Okay, we're at a police slash military base here in the Nile Delta. Uh, this place is very surreal. We've been going through incredible agricultural areas, and now this whole ancient archaeological site has basically almost nothing growing on it. Oh, he's got the good one, huh? There is a huge chunk here of milky quartz that I love to mark. Wow. Probably the, the largest one remains in any other place. So we're several hundred miles away from any granite or quartzite stone quarry, and yet look at the number and size of these huge blocks here. So Patricia, was all this stuff found buried? Yep, absolutely. They've moved it, lined it all up here. And you can look out here, and you'll look, and look at how the desert moves and all these lumps. Everything under there, this site is covered. We're probably only seeing 2%, if that, of what's underneath the sands. And as you walk around, you're going to see amazing. You're going to see the obelisks that they tried to take away. And because they didn't understand the physics of it, they're broken in two all over the place. Um, over here is the sacred lake. And it's built and constructed, and there's even as you go down the steps, you can see there's writings on the bottom. But this whole site, half, most of it's underground. But what we're seeing is unbelievable. Um, uh, when I've been reading uh, Petrie's original uh, text, he said that there was roughly 120 foot colossi here. Uh -huh. One colossi, but he speculates that there should have been two, but they've only found the one. Uh -huh. But he said it was all into pieces, and from Ramses the second time, they have been carving things out of these pieces, but said there was enough pieces that he could fit it together to a minimum of 120 feet high. And it would have been a, gr a granitic right. stone. That, he said it was a granitic as opposed to being the quartzite like these ones. Any estimate on the weight? Well, he equated it with the um, Ramesseum. So Big. 700 to 1,000 yes. tons moved either from the eastern desert or from Aswan Quarry. That's right. Which is at the opposite end of Egypt. That's right. But the damage is much more on the right side than the left side. Wow. Why is it cut like that? Because the statue itself was broken Bloody. apart and this was used as a block in modern structures like this. Wow. But when you look at a statue that is this big and you look at the size of the foot and then look at the size of a foot like this size, then how the 125 feet tall. These are not as well in granite. These have a really fairly, but they have a reasonable quartz content in them. Uh -huh. So I'm not sure where they come from. It's either going to be in Sinai or the Eastern Desert, but they have quite a bit of quartz in them. So they are, look at how coarse and loose that is. Yeah. They're going to break apart a lot quicker than some of the darker ones. And we can see that it's not as perfect as the structures in the pyramid structure. There is huge space Doing dynamic video here, folks. One solid piece of granite.
So this is dynastic work, or later. You can say it, see it's limestone, small pieces. And then we have this landscape here. Solid chunks of granite, either from the eastern desert or Aswan in the absolute south of Egypt. And obelisks whose surface here is exceedingly heavily eroded. Lots of obelisks. But also it has another good evidence to it that we can see. Look at the amount of flints in it. I think perhaps that these came first because they've got the better cuts that have been preserved. Uh -huh. And I think it's because they're finer crystalline size and the lattice structure holds together. So when they cut it with precision, it holds that precise angle and the smoother cut on it. Well, this is travertine? And you, th you think that it's possible that the travertine isn't even from Egypt? Well, it, from what I've seen of the hot springs around here, they are fairly small hot springs. This could be from uh, one of the smaller hot springs because you can see the crystal size. Whereas, remember in the uh, in the in Karnak, we were seeing those calcite crystals about this thick before they hit the mudstone. That thick again, mudstone. These are very small. I think this. Maybe a maybe local or maybe just on the edge of one. Okay. How far is the length of the what you had there is, uh, she said it was a four sided shirt. That the so that's the silicone we did with the Right. No. Well, see, there was a piece at the other place. So Susan, here's an interesting piece of stone or something. gas bubbles in it. I think it's a piece of uh, slag from, I've read the Romans used to work glass here, but it may have been something else that they were working, but that appears to be a piece of slag. Okay, but could it be a piece of cooked stone? No. No? When you feel it, it's just way lighter. It's it's from the, the smelting process. Oh, yeah, there's way too much destruction and surface damage here. Possible evidence of the stone being scorched.
so very cool So you see the limestone, and that tells us this is likely dynastic period. However, you have these massive slabs of granite, and not just massive uh, slabs of granite. This is actually a room or series of rooms which are now underground, but could have been above ground thousands upon thousands of years ago. Solid granite room leading on to another room. Oh, that's a box. Good, very good. This uh, will close uh, with the lid on it. So, an underground structure with giant slabs of granite. And I don't know what that is, whether it might be a box. So the site is called Tanis. It's located about four miles, sorry, hours north of Cairo. Uh, phenomenal site, megalithic, seems to have been buried uh, as a result of a cataclysm. It was likely dug up during dynastic times by Ramses II in order to utilize the granite for other construction purposes. And then the famous French archaeologist Mariette did some work here and others. Oh,